everybody, it's Nikki Nicole with Black Girl Budget, and today I have a very special surprise for you guys. I am here with the Money Boss Mama. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, Money Boss Mama. Hi, I am Diana, and I am 28 years old. I am from little old Arkansas. What? And yes, <laughs> the, the country. <laughs> Um, but I have two children, so I am a mom of two, and I started Money Boss Mama um, actually a year ago, a little nice. over a year ago. I rebranded into Money Boss Mama, so my main goal and focus is to teach other women, especially mothers, that how to become bosses of their money and to show them that they are capable of paying off debt, saving money, and being a boss. Yes, because that is the ultimate goal is to pay off that debt and be a boss. Absolutely. Yes. So you now you said that you rebranded into Money Boss Mama. Did you originally have a different brand before? Yes. So when I started my debt free journey, I actually created a website. It was called A Debt Free Journey. <laughs> and so it was just the way in which I was going to hold myself accountable. I said, if I put myself out on the internet, I'm going to embarrass <laughs> myself yes. into sticking to this journey. So if anyone comes on my website to um, take a look and see how I am paying off debt, I have to stay consistent with it because this is how I'm going to hold myself accountable. And then uh, it just grew into me as I learned I wanted to teach because it originally started as me just sharing how much I paid off, what my goals were, but I eventually grew into teaching other people and I was getting emails and everything like hey can you help me with this can you help me with that yes. so I eventually after about two three years of a debt-free journey I rebranded into money boss mama nice I love that name I mean it's so like I I don't have kids so it's a little difficult for me sometimes to try to tell people with kids how they should budget because when I'm talking about it I, I forget about childcare and clothes and school and all that stuff. So it's so nice to see someone that is carving out a special space for mothers who are also trying to get out of debt and are also trying to, you know, get their finances under control. But I, I especially love your story. And something that caught my eye was that you paid off a significant amount of money in a short period of time. Like, give us the details. How did that happen? So... Um, I had actually started a debt free journey before and I quit like many others because um, I just lacked the motivation, I lacked the willpower and I lacked the, the knowledge to do it. And so in 2016, I'm like, okay, this cannot be my life. I'm busting my butt working a job that I hate only to have my paycheck gobbled up by bills and expenses, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like stuck in that rat race. And you're like, this is it for me. I'm going to be doing this till I'm 65 and then I'll start living. But I just felt like um, God had a different plan for me and I was uncomfortable yes. in that position. So I gave it another go mm -hmm. in 2016. And um, I actually started being low income. I didn't see a lot of people on the, a debt-free journey that were working with a low income. Mm. And I didn't see a lot of single mothers on this journey. And I did not see a lot of one income people on this journey. So I figured like, okay, this is something that I feel in my heart I need to do. And I'm gonna show and prove to other people that I, I can do this and I'm gonna show them how I'm doing it. So. $27,000 later, here I am, and it's been almost four years. So in September, my journey on a low income, and now I, the end of 2018, I became, I moved up the bracket to moderate income, uh, but a lot of it was just mindset. A lot of it is mindset, and a lot of people like to skip over that part, but they don't realize how important it is. So if your mindset is not right, if you don't really believe that you can do something, you're going to get distracted and you're going mm -hmm. to quit, right? Because our, our thoughts and our feelings have to align with our goals. Absolutely. Otherwise, we're not going to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So being the hard-headed, resilient person that I am, I truly believe that I could, I could do this. I can do this. I don't care that I may, I'm making my expenses ex are equaling my income. Mm -hmm. I don't care. One thing you mentioned that was really important was like the mindset, which is a really big thing that I've seen 
some people, they're like, you know, well, I don't think I can stop shopping or I don't think I can stop yeah. spending money. So it's kind of the mindset of, do you actually believe you can do this? But the other thing I've noticed is, do people think they deserve to have financial freedom? Do people honestly think I deserve to be wealthy? I deserve to be able to afford things, to give my kids things. I don't think a lot of people actually no. believe that. And I, I, the more I talk about like financial freedom and I hear people say, well, I'm going to die owing somebody. And I'm like, but yes. you, don't, you don't have to. Like you're, you're literally making that decision when you say that out loud. So what do you think is the, the issue with people not really understanding that they deserve to have financial freedom? I think the main issue is just how society has conditioned us to believe that debt is normal. I literally oh, had someone yeah. tell me when I started my journey, she said, you're never going to be able to pay off debt. You're never going to be able to live um, without debt. That is just normal. It's a part of life. You are always going to owe someone something. So you might as well get what you want. Oh my and gosh. unfortunately, you know, that's that's how people think that's that the is. norm because they don't see anyone else living a different way like we are the rare community you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. and so we should not be the rare community but we are and it's so crazy like once you start this journey and you have that mindset shift it's so crazy to look back and think like i thought that same exact way like i'm always going to owe someone something and it's okay because mm -hmm you see people in new cars and they you know they didn't pay cash for it right. you financed it that's normal um mortgages are normal credit card debt it's normal, normal. They, oh my god yeah. we normalize these things and we don't feel like we deserve anything else because we don't have anyone showing us that we have any other options mm -hmm. No, that's a really good point um i so i went to law school and i have a friend who we don't even talk about our student loans anymore because they're so ridiculous. But anytime we would talk about it before, she would always say, yeah, no, I'm only going to send them like $5 a month. Yeah. And that's it. And I'm like, sis, we are over a hundred thousand dollars in debt. That little $5 ain't doing it. Like your interest <laughs> on that alone is like, deep I'm gonna eat it up. but, but her mindset was, I'm never going to pay that off. Like it's a hundred thousand dollars. I'm never going to pay that off. And the more that I'm on my journey and I'm like paying off my student loans one at a time, I'm just like, no, this is, this is definitely feasible. So I yeah. think the community that we're in, people are really starting to grasp like, oh shoot, I can actually pay off my credit card and then just not have credit card debt. Or I can pay off my car and not be concerned about it getting repoed. So it's really, um, it's really interesting to see other people starting to like gravitate toward that mindset and really understanding like you, it's possible to be completely debt free. Um, but in that same vein, right, we have challenges. So mm -hmm. as you said earlier, you know, you'll see people that are like, I paid off $100,000 in two years. That did not happen for me. So what, but we, <laughs> we don't really talk about like the struggles or the challenges. Yeah. So I know you have kids and I know you said that you started with low income. Like what are some challenges that you faced along this journey? So I would say one of the challenges that I faced was those pop-up expenses. It seems like, you know, you go 10 steps forward and then the universe says, oh, okay, she's getting ahead. Let me knock her five steps back. Mm -hmm. And so a major challenge for me was just staying consistent because I've had my car break down, I've had my son admitted into the hospital, oh. and yes, so you, you're you always on this journey, you're living life, and life is always going to happen. You have to not only realize that, but accept it. And so you are gonna have financial setbacks. You may relapse and spend money that you did not have to spend. Like a lot of Amen. people don't talk about that, you know? Yes. Uh, that's just, something that's going to happen. And as a, a mother of two on one income, I cannot tell you how many times I've had financial setbacks. I've gone on into more debt since I started my journey about four or five times, honestly. Wow. Yes, with personal loans, um, getting new laptops, 
Um, running up my credit card, I, I ran up my credit card before, even though I was technically on a debt free journey. Mm -hmm. But the main thing that has helped me get to where I am um, was consistency. Just not accepting defeat. You, mm -hmm. whenever you fall on your butt, you know to tweak your plan. You have to sit there and analyze what happened in that situation. So next time in the future, you now know what to look out for, what right. signs to look out for, you know? How to react. Yeah. How to react mm -hmm. so that you can get yourself together. Just realize that it's, it's not a failure, it's a learning experience and use that to tweak your strategy. Yeah. That's a really, really good way to say that. Um, and I appreciate your honesty when you said that you've actually gone into debt while on your debt-free journey. I I wish the debt-free journey was just very like cute and simple. Like, okay, this is my debt and I'm paying it down and it's going down. But realistically speaking, you're like, yeah, I'm on a debt-free journey, but I do need to get a new car. Even on my debt-free journey, I got into a car accident, got rear-ended and my car was totaled. And, but my car was paid off, right? So there was no car note, there was no car payment. And then all of a sudden, I now have to get a new car and I have a car yeah. note. And I'm like, this is not part of the plan. So <laughs> it, it's definitely like a roller coaster kind of it situation. Is. And I appreciate the honesty in saying that it the, the possibility of you going into more debt while on a debt-free journey is definitely there because life is going to happen. Um, and I don't, think, I don't think we talk about challenges and I don't think we talk about possibly going into debt while on your debt-free journey. So I'm really glad that you said it like that because I want people to know you're not less than for not yeah. having like this really cute Instagrammable debt-free journey. It doesn't, it doesn't always work like that. Not really so fair. what is, what's one piece of advice that you would give to people that are on their debt-free journey? Staying the course, like you may have to pause your debt-free journey. You may have to lower your debt payments, but um, at the end of the day, you're not giving up on your goal. You're just mm -hmm. having, you're tweaking the way in which you are getting to it, right. but never give up on the goal. Like keep the main end result in mind, visualize on it and stay focused. And also a main piece of advice would be just to continue learning. A lot of us, like we weren't really taught about money. No. The only things that we came out into the world as an adult with were the things that we observed with our parents, like mm -hmm. how they spent their money and what they said about their money. And we unconsciously adopt those beliefs and those habits. Um, so we are out here in this world as adults and we are like, what the heck are we doing? You know? And for those who start on this journey, you have so much more to learn. And yes. you have to realize that how you start is not how you're going to end because you are going to continue learning. Your mind is your greatest asset. Knowledge is your greatest asset. And as you learn more, you are able to strengthen your strategy um, and just benefit more from the, the things that you've learned along the way. So you're not gonna start off perfect. You have to know what you don't know. Yes. It's important to know what you don't know. Yes. So you're going to have those gaps. And if you, you recognize those gaps, fill in those gaps because you need those gaps. And as you continue building up this wall, you're going to continue climbing it, but you can't get to the top if you, if you have these gaps that you can't grab onto mm -hmm. to keep climbing up, you know? Yeah. So that's something that um, is extremely important. Right. I do have one more question for you before we go. So I call it target practice, which is where you focus on like a specific loan and like you throw all your extra money toward that, that loan or that debt to get it paid off. Um, and I think you might call it something a little different, but what loan or like what debt are you currently focused on paying off? So right now I'm currently focused on my, it's my loan number two. I have mm -hmm. two left. This is the second loan, student loan that I've ever gotten. Okay. And so I started focusing on that because I paid off my third at the end of March. So mm -hmm. as soon as I paid off that third one, and I was actually focused on that one because it had the highest interest rate, but now my last two are down to the same interest rate. So I'm focusing on the one with the lowest balance. They call it the snowball method. You may yes. have heard that. And that's yes. when you... Pick the one with the smallest balance because no one has time to wait 10,000 years to see progress. Right. And I know for me, it's helped to save my sanity. <laughs> so I am focused on that one. <laughs> that one I started at the end of March. So it's been about two months. Okay. And um, that one started at 4,500. I think I'm down to about 
fifteen hundred, so I got a little bit more to go. Nice. Uh, but I feel like focusing, like having a target loan, it helps to keep you from getting overwhelmed, especially yes. if you have a long list of debt. You know, it's overwhelming. You don't know where to start. So you're paralyzed by fear and you don't start at all. Mm -hmm. If you just start on one thing at a time, put your efforts and focus on one thing at a time, it becomes a lot easier to start the journey and stay consistent. Yeah, no, I definitely get, agree. Um, congratulations on paying off loan number three. Thank you. And you're doing really good on loan number two. Like you're already down so much. So that's really good. Um, I just want to thank you so much for like shedding some, some light, some insight into Money Boss Mama. I absolutely love, love, love your page. Is there like a website or how can we follow you more and get more information from you? Yes. So my website, the name is all the same, moneybossmama.com. You can follow me um, on Instagram at moneybossmama.com. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I actually just started a YouTube channel because Ooh. I like to chat and ramble like I am right now. So <laughs> I feel like, it's, and then you've got people that learn differently. They don't want to sit and read a blog post, you know, this True. long post. They want to just be able to do other things while they're listening to you. So I have a YouTube channel. I just started Money Boss Mama. So nice. check it out as well. Nice. All right. So we can follow you on Instagram, YouTube, website. Do you have like a Twitter account, anything like that? No Twitter, but I do like to pin. I'm always pinning. So okay. you can find me on Pinterest at Money Boss Mama. Yes, yes. Look, we need all the handles because we want to make sure we can get all this information. So thank you so much. Um, hopefully we can do this again and follow yes. up on your, your debt journey to see what's going on. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.